Knockout takes, Almunia saves, knockout follows in, Almunia saves again! Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Around the World Sports. My name is Aaron Shellen, and today I am joined by a very special guest, former major leaguer and current Chicago Dog infielder, Tyler Ladendorf. We talk about Tyler's first season here with the Dogs. We talk a little bit about playing for manager Butch Hobson, uh, his experience in the major leagues. We talk about his favorite ballpark. Uh, and we talk about what I consider to be the most exciting moment of the 2020 Dogs season. Hope you enjoy it. And I am joined by Chicago Dogs infielder Tyler Ladendorf. Tyler is a Chicago native out of Des Plaines by way of Maine West High School. Uh, he was a second round draft pick in the 2008 MLB draft by the Minnesota Twins. He's got just over 800 minor league games over 12 seasons, and he does actually have uh, a cup of coffee in the major league. Spent 65 major league at-bats with the Oakland A's in 2016, and he just finished up his first season here in Chicago with the Dogs, where he had 13 home runs in 55 games playing, really playing all over the field, uh, multiple infield positions as well as left field. So, Tyler, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking some time with me tonight. Absolutely. No, I appreciate you having me. So first question, obviously, and I'm going to get more into this a little bit later, but um, Major League Baseball playoffs starting today. So the first question I got to ask, obviously, is Cubs or Sox? I was a White Sox fan growing up. White so. Sox fan growing yeah. up. Gotcha. All right, cool. So um, I guess, how's the offseason going? You know, I mean, a bit of a shortened season, a little bit weird. Uh, you know, how, how, how are things going since the season ended? No, good. Um, you know, coming back down uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, where, you know, um, got a house down here with the kids um, and whatnot so uh no it's been um it's been good just being back home seeing them um no it's uh it feels weird you know um like you said 60 games you almost feel like you didn't get your money's worth um mm -hmm. but no I mean ultimately I feel like because like the timing um you know of affiliated ball uh when I finished up you know in Durham last year it's you know the season kind of ended uh, generally probably when it normally would so Ultimately, I feel like my body feels pretty good. Um, so, you know, kind of got right back in the gym the last few days. And I, I think more than anything, it's just being realistic with uh, just the kind of the workload you had in the summer, um, depending on where you were and, and how your body feels now. So I don't think anybody's going to be too out of whack other than just probably, you know, kind of just changing probably what you do in the gym a little bit, just knowing that probably can kind of get after it a little bit more, um, not necessarily needing that time off, you know, you probably would after 100, you know, 50 plus games. So. So was was your family not with you in Chicago? Were they back in? Uh, were they yeah. back home? Yeah, no, they, they stayed down here. Um, so, you know, just uh, got to come home, obviously, you know, the house I grew up in um, with my mom, my grandma. Um, so, yeah, no, being back in Des Plaines obviously was, uh, you know, ideal. Um, yeah, I would couldn't ask uh, for a whole lot more. It was um, it had been a while since I'd been back. So mm. now it was. Obviously, it would have been better if the kids and whatnot would have been there. But um, no, it was, uh, it was a summer I won't forget, for sure. And that actually leads me into, into my, my first, I guess, baseball-related question. How did you enjoy your first season with the Dogs? I mean, being, being a local guy, it had to be fun playing it at home. No, I mean, obviously, with, with the pandemic, um, not being able to probably see as many people um, as I normally would have was probably the only, you know, the only negative, just kind of having to be at home and hang out with my mom and grandma most, most you know, afternoons, mm -hmm. before, after games and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, just uh, it was um, a little bit, um, I guess, mellowed out um, the homecoming. But no, I mean, a homecoming nonetheless. And yeah, I mean. You, all you got to do is drive by Impact Field and, you know, you get excited. That's that's about a, a show, a stadium, not in the show um, as it gets. Yeah. So, no, it's, uh, I mean, the clubhouse, the cages, um, all that stuff. When, when you're just talking about the the work that you put in before, you know, the lights come on at seven. It's um, when all that is uh, up to the par that, you know, Impact Field is at. It's, uh, no, it makes your days, you know, a little bit easier to kind of 
show up and, and just have that motivation to put the work in. So um, plan for Butch. I, Butch is, has always been known as a, a bit of a unique personality. You know, there's videos out there of him, you know, taking the base and handing it to a fan in the in the stands and stuff. It, we didn't we didn't get to see much of that on the field this year, obviously, as Butch was was really I uh, really tried to stick to those those COVID protocols. But but what was it what was it like playing for him? I mean, is you know it, the name Butch Hobson, you know, it doesn't need much of an introduction. You, you understand, you know, what he's done in this game. So, um, yeah, no, it was uh, just from the stories to just little things here and there. Um, just little, you know, in, and as a guy that's played in the big leagues, um, when, when, you know, it'd be a little bit different, my relationship with him versus maybe a guy like, you know, Harrison Smith or someone like that, where it's like, you know, probably just different kind of questions, different, hey, what do you think of this? And it's, just always just input, um, you know, what do you think of this? What, what about that? Um, I was thinking this, what were you thinking? You know, it's just so much give and take. Um, but no, I mean, the idea to, to say that you're trying to pick his brain would kind of be an understatement. Cause like I said, uh, you, you, everybody knows what he's done in this game. So um, no, I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was everything I thought it would be without a doubt. As, as somebody who's, I mean, you've got a lot of, a lot of experience kind of under your belt in, in, world of professional baseball does does someone like butch for you and 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 you talked about harrison does 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 someone like butch have more more cred you know with with someone like you versus someone like harrison or or does that not really matter is a baseball mind a baseball mind whether they played in the bigs or not yeah no that's a good question um I mean, you gotta think it's like, for me, it's like, I understand how hard it is to just be a first base coach in the big leagues, let alone be a guy that they pick to, you know, run a team. Mm. So it's like, but then it's like in Harrison, it's like, we'll just do coach in the big leagues. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, really what, regardless of your perspective, it's like the dude has, you know, done some things, you know, that not many have done and been in places and been around other people um, that not many have, you know, had shared those experiences. Um, so no, like you said, it's, uh, I would have to say that regardless of what um, kind of perspective you're kind of approaching him from, uh, you, like you said, you, you understand that, you know, there, there's, there's no wrong answer with, with mm -hmm. a guy like that would probably be the best way to describe it. It's like I said, it's just, it's input um, here and there. And, and I mean, you're, you're, you're gonna be better. Um, when when you're around people like that, it just uh, it's 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 just kind of contagious about just hey, let's all just pay attention to everything that's going on. You know, when your manager is doing that, um, it's uh, like I said, yeah, no, everybody else just kind of falls in line, so to say. So there were a, a few of you, you and 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 Joey on the offensive side of things, and then Casey on on the pitching side of things, who have played in uh, that have played in the bigs. Do your teammates? look to you for advice or, or tips and, and how does your major league experience help you help your teammates? Yeah, no. Um, I mean, I feel like when you get to the level I've gotten to, um, whether you have success or failures, and in my case, some of the failures, um, I feel like that almost holds more weight. Um, because honestly, like, it's, it'd be tough for Harrison Smith to go and, and relate to Nolan Arenado. Like, it's like, Nolan would tell him things and Harrison would be like, well, I can't do that. Like, that doesn't work for me, you know? So yeah, no, I feel like because um, I feel like some of the failures I've had and the realisticness that kind of comes with it, um, it's, it, it, was, it was fun to, to answer some of the questions, you know, from certain guys. But no, to answer your question, um, yeah, no, I feel like as an older guy, um, you, you, it's just kind of give and take. Um, it's never a, I think you should do this, or it's, it's, if I'm talking about comparing Vic, a move Vic Roach is making to maybe a move like Miguel Cabrera used to make or, or something like that, it's just little, hey, I seen this dude do this and this worked for him think about it that 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 that's all it ever is it's never put your hands here stepped here um but no i mean then half the time it, it's more just mental um i mean just what do you think this guy's gonna do and 
it's it's just kind of a deal where hey, if you're not gonna you know go after this first pitch fastball, then you know look the other way. So you're you know you're on that second pitch breaking ball. It's just little things like that um, that I feel like because uh, the level I got to, I can you know kind of help some guys out. So it's almost more just the the cumulative experience that you've had playing professional baseball versus necessarily that time you spent in the big leagues. You've seen. You've seen every potential situation, so you know how to address it. So it allows you to help some of those players who maybe haven't. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I feel like because of, you know, and more so because of the time I spent in AAA. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, geez, every big leaguer now, I mean, I've, I've essentially played against or with, you know, in AAA. I've been part of right. AAA for the last six years. So, I mean, pretty much everybody you see on TV now, I've, I've seen what they've done even before they got there. So I've kind of seen the process of a lot of guys, um, good and bad. So I think that, um, you know, will will only go into the favor of guys I play with as far as just me kind of sharing those experiences um, more than anything. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's you don't want to ever feel like you're too imposing, you know, as kind of that veteran. But it's more just almost like, hey, if you want my input, like I'm kind of here, I'm around, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, no, it's. uh but you got to have younger guys that are just willing to go out there and get better every day. And, and we did. And that, you know, obviously we didn't have the success we wanted to. Um, but no, I, I feel like, I mean, everybody got better. Um, I don't think there was anybody on our team that was not better at the end of the year. And ultimately the numbers, you know, probably weren't there, but um, you know, that's half the battle, just controlling what you can. And if you feel like, you know, you at least made, even if it's only a few right steps, um, you gotta, you gotta be happy with that. You know, it's funny, you talk about how, how the season didn't really go kind of the way that, that you guys had wanted. There there were some there were some some peaks and there were some valleys. It was it was a very streaky team and it, and it's funny that you bring that you say it like that because my favorite moment of the season was in a loss. <laughs> my my favorite moment of the dog season was that ten run ninth inning against Sioux Falls. It was you had the big hit in that inning. Seven straight walks, you step up to the plate, bases loaded, <laughs> grand slam, tie game, two batters later, Vic hits a home run. You guys aren't able to hold on. But for me, that was that was by far the highlight of that that ninth inning was the highlight yeah. of my year. And one of honestly one of my most favorite moments in a and I'm I'm 44 years old, man. So I, I got you by a decade, and that's that's one of my one of my all time favorite baseball moments was being there and a part of that. So I guess from a, from a technical point of view, was it hard walking up to the plate knowing that that the Canaries had walked seven straight batters and trying to be patient, but at the same time looking for your pitch? I mean, is, is that, it's got to be really easy to walk up there and say, well, he's just going to walk me too. You know, how do you, how do you kind of balance that with making sure that you look for your right pitch? And you, I mean, you certainly found it, but, but how do you balance that? I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, my thought process was say, it's different when you're the tying run. Um, and we always talk about whether it's the first pitch of a game, a guy ambushing a fastball, or bottom of the ninth, seven straight walks. I knew I was getting the first pitch fastball. I, I missed it, you know. I hit it. I hit a ground ball down the line, um, and, I, and I, I remember, you know, it was a curveball um, that I thought was in. Um, but it was so. I mean, to talk about that, I mean, seven walks and then down 0-2. So it was an 0-2, you know, curveball that you know he just kind of left up. Um, but no, you're right. Walking up, I'm thinking in the back of my mind that I'm not going to take a fastball in the zone right here. And it's kind of a deal where there's very few scenarios where you're saying either double homer or like a foul ball. And that was one of them. Um, so, yeah, no, I was thinking, I'm, if not tie this game, I'm going to I'm going to be in scoring position or I'm going to have scored after after this at bat. And so, yeah, I mean, it's um, <laughs> I've played a long time and I I've never been a part of something like that. I've never seen something like that. And I've never heard of something like that. Um, because when you talk about seven walks in one inning, whether it's the third inning or not in a game in double A AA or triple A, like you would know, like, I mean, after, like without even checking box scores, you just check Twitter and be like, Hey, by the way, this team walked this many guys in a row. You, you would think that's a big deal in the third or fourth inning, let alone the top of the nine. Right. Uh, so yeah, no, it was, uh, something. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget. Probably. I mean, without a doubt, I've never done something like that. Um, I've hit a couple walk off homers, but, um, I don't know that I, I think I'd rather take the the 
down, yeah, the down by four, Grant tying Grand Slam in the ninth, and then a walk off homer. Because, I mean, there's just so much that has to go right from, for so many guys to to have something like that happen. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is. It, it's funny that you say that because my mindset is completely different um, than even like I think it was Casey who was sitting in front of me because. If he hits a homer, we're still down by one. So you're still thinking, hey, I'm taking until a strike. But for me, it's like I can't just take a, you know, a first pitch fastball that I know I can handle um, being the time run. So, yeah, no, it was uh, – you don't ever second guess yourself walking up, but um, you're kind of like, man, like I can't take this fastball. But at the same time, like you you paid attention to what just happened for the last 20 minutes. So right. it's like, man, if you go up there and swing at a ball, you, you don't want to be that guy. So, no, it was uh, – that that's walking the tightrope for sure, for sure. When when you got down o two in that in that in that uh, at bat, were you second guessing your strategy, knowing how wild the Canaries had been? Did you did you say, oh man, you know, what did I what did I do or what did I get myself into here? Or? You know, it was I was I, I I was realistic in the in the sense of that it was a, the fastball was kind of middle middle. And it had a little run to it. So, you know, it was a good pitch. Um, it was down, but still a strike. So, I t- you know, I obviously I took a pass. And then the other curveball w- was up and in. Um, I didn't think it was a strike. But judging by where the two pitches were, I'm saying he's either you're, – you're, you're, you're essentially still – I was never essentially quite in battle mode because he didn't really – show me anything that I felt like I needed to battle. It was two pitches that I thought I could handle. One of them I just thought was a ball, so I didn't take a swing. So it, you got to be realistic with where pitches are, which ones he threw. Um, and like I said, what had happened the last, you know, five, six, 15 minutes, you know, beforehand. So, uh, no, it was, it, was, it was a weird feeling even when I was 2 but it wasn't like in any way, shape, or form a defeated feeling because I felt like with, in that instance, you know, he didn't necessarily have obviously his A stuff. So in the back of my mind, I'm saying he's still got to come over the plate and there's a good chance he might leave something over the middle of the plate. And, you know, he just happened to do it the very next pitch. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Cause I mean, I remember I was up in the box and, and one of the things I was, it, it once, once you saw that, that they were having trouble hitting the plate, it was, mm-hmm. it was, you know, you, in a lot of cases as a batter, you sit there and, and you, Force them to throw at least one strike, yeah. but in a situation like that, I mean, you almost have to wait for them to throw two strikes. You know, prove that you can yeah. do it more than once. You know, yeah. before before I'm going to attack. And and it sounds like that's exactly what you did. You know, you laid off yeah. a pitch that you thought was going to be called the ball. It wasn't, and 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 you battled. You got your pitch, and and it was it was a. I mean, everything that's hit in Sioux Falls is a no doubter. But but that yeah. one was that was that was definitely a no doubter. So yeah, yeah it's 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 cool because. You know, you said you had you had uh, never experienced anything like that. I mean, that you know that game tying or game winning grand slam in the ninth mm-hmm. inning is sort of that that childhood you know the thing that we all do in the backyard growing up, right? You know, down by Absolutely. three, you know, come up in the bottom of the ninth, and and you got to live it, and that's that's pretty cool, you know, and yes. and. Uh, um, so anyway, for, for, for those for those people who are actually watching, I'm going to post a, a, a link below uh, the interview, too, because I actually have the entire ninth inning. Uh, oh, okay. My call from the ninth inning is posted to my YouTube page. So um, I'm going to post that below for anybody who wants to listen. But it was it was a, it was a wild. It was a wild. That whole series was crazy. But but yeah, that game in particular right. was uh, was unlike anything I had ever seen before. So. Um, only a couple more questions for you, Tyler. Again, I, I appreciate you taking some time here with me tonight. So you've 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 played in a lot of different ballparks over your 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 twelve professional seasons. Um, outside of the big league stadiums, because I mean that's probably the, the that would probably be the answer. But outside of the big league stadiums that you played in, which one is your favorite? Favorite stadium outside of the big leagues. Um... That's a tough one. Um, El Paso, AAA for the Padres, got to be up there. Um, I was fortunate enough to go there right when it opened in 2014, uh, when we were when the A's were in Sacramento. Um, Charlotte, where we're here, when I was with the Knights, um, the backdrop um, with the city right behind it. That's the thing that probably would separate 
uh, a place like Charlotte um, is the location. When you're talking about right downtown the city, um, you got, you know, 40 story buildings, you know, out behind the outfield. And that's, that's what you're kind of, you think you're going to be able to hit one. Uh, <laughs> that's just what you're seeing. That, uh, that just makes batting practice every day that much, you know, less monotonous, so to say, because let's face it, when you show up and do the same stuff every day, um, it gets monotonous. Um, but no, Charlotte, El Paso. Um, I'll tell you another one that I actually enjoyed was um, Elizabethton when I was in the uh, Appalachian League with the Twins. Uh, in Tennessee, right? Yeah, yeah, um, the Appalachian League. So I would, but I mean, when you want to talk about, if we're talking about independent ball, I'd probably say between Impact Field and actually High Point. I, I feel lucky. I mean, last year I was playing in a brand new stadium and this year I'm playing in a stadium that's two years old. So it's like, I feel like the last couple of stadiums I've played at, um, they're indie ball stadiums, but I mean, I feel like High Point could be AAA and we already know, you know, Impact Field could be a AAA stadium. So no, um, yeah, it, it's, I'd say these last two years, High Point and, and Impact have been uh, been fortunate to uh, been there, been able to show up there every day, so. What was the what was the hardest adjustment um, playing professional sports in in a, in a COVID world? What was the the, the hardest thing to, to to deal with? That's a good question. Um, I would say I mean probably just the the closeness um like there's there's just certain joking around you know whether it's 1 30 in the afternoon or, you know just guys bumping into each other pranks different things like that um that obviously you just couldn't do uh, mm -hmm. you know it's i'm trying to it's tough to you know put a you know think of an exact uh example but yeah no i would just say like obviously having to wear a mask you know around mm -hmm. um that was, you know, obviously got a little uh, monotonous as well. But I would just say, like, just you know, chest bumps, high fives, all the all the crazy handshakes, dancing, you know, yeah. just stuff that you do. And whether it's in, you know, in the dugout, um, obviously the dugout culture, you got to. We couldn't stand next to each other in the dugout, so I would probably say if I had to say something, just the dugout um, mannerisms, if sure. if you you know if that kind of makes sense, would yeah. probably be. The biggest thing is, yeah, I mean, no handshakes, no just closeness of just getting rowdy when, when you're doing well. So it's like, it's almost like you go up 2-0 in a game and it's like, you got to be mellow. You, you feel like at times you almost couldn't take advantage of certain momentums just because of, just honestly, because of COVID. You, you, the, it, the idea of just keeping that energy going um, at times when y'all got to stay apart, it was, uh, it was tough. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, you guys had a, a couple of walk-off home runs at, at Impact this year, and, you know, there's no celebrating at home plate, and there's no jumping around, and there's no, yeah. you know, dumping the, the the Gatorade bucket on somebody. It's, you know, and I think and I think a lot of that starts at the top. I mean, I talked to Butch before every single road game this year, and, and one of the things he said that, that stood out to me towards the end of the season was he said um, that he was talking to to you guys uh, pregame, and he said that that, you know, one, the season hasn't obviously gone entirely the way we, that we wanted, but we're batting a thousand against COVID. And, and when you have someone like like Butch kind of at the top, who's whose primary concern, obviously, I mean, his goal as a as a manager is to win ball games, but but you could see you could see that there was a genuine concern for his players and his coaching staff. You know, I mean, he wanted he wanted to win, but he also wanted you guys to be safe. And, and I think that that says a lot about, you know, I asked you what it was like to play for him, but I think that says a lot about him as a person, um, not just a manager, is that, you know, he, he wants to win, he wants to put you guys in a position to win, but he also wants to make sure that, that everybody goes home to their family at the end of the season healthy. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I can't thank him enough for kind of setting that tone, um, you know. It's uh, my grandma, you know, it had cancer. Um, so she would be, you know, at risk um, if she were to get it. Um, and whether you're at risk or not, like the idea that if, if you were to be someone, you know, that was careless and, you know, you know, not only had it, but then gave it to others, like I wouldn't sleep well. Um, I know that, but no, I think I, I, like I said, I can't thank him enough for the tone he set. Um, 
because you're right. Like the idea that we all got to come in there, you know, for a couple of months and, and do something that we really enjoy um, around good people that we enjoy being around. Um, it's hard to put a price tag on that when you can say that, hey, there's not ever going, there's not going to be any complications and not, not now, not in five years, not in 20 years. Um, there's really not a team that can say that. Um, so it's, uh, no, I mean, yeah, we, uh, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that he was uh, from day one um, is, is outspoken about, you know, things that I know on other, other based on other teams actions, I know other managers simply were not as outspoken. It's just that simple. I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but. When, That's okay. You don't have to butch did butch did for you. So it's fine. <laughs> when, when you see what some of these other teams were doing in the dugouts, um, how close they were at times, mm -hmm. not wearing masks. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I just, I feel thankful that, that butch was, was right in the ship and, and, and had us, you know, up to uh, up to speed and and held everybody extremely accountable every day and that's um I know I know in 15 20 years I'll uh I'll I'll uh I'll owe him a uh some kind some kind of gift basket I'll uh I'll send him some little care package yeah butch was uh there, there were a couple of times during the season where where you could tell that that he was kind of on the verge of um you know, back in that bus over somebody, uh, yeah. you know, he, cause I mean, he just, he took it seriously. And when he saw somebody else not taking it seriously, he had a problem with it, you know? And, and there were a couple of times where during, during my pregame interviews with him where he, uh, he made it a point to, to call out, never called out a particular person, but called out teams and, and that sort of thing. So yeah. Butch being Butch, I guess. So, mm -hmm. um, so Tyler, you're, you're 32 years old, right? 12, 12 seasons in the minor leagues two an independent ball. I know you've got kids. I, what keeps you going? What what motivates you to play, continue to, to, to play baseball? Um, you know, I told myself a long time ago, even before I signed professionally, that essentially my body was going to tell me um, when I was done. Um, and and that, that, that alone really was going to be my determining factor. Um, I felt unfortunate when you know even when I got to the big leagues I made our opening day roster in 15 and a week later I blew my ankle up um had like the Derek Jeter surgery so I mean that mm -hmm. pretty much cost me a year so um there were times where I feel like you know multiple wrist surgeries um I feel like even when I was in the big leagues or even in the upper minors there were just injuries um that you know times were kind of out of my control and so but I missed time and so I feel like as a 32 year old like you said it's like I don't feel like I play like a 32 year old because I don't have the miles of most 32 year olds. Um, Ian Kinsler's playing every day in the big leagues, 155 games. I, it would, it's, it's unrealistic to think that he's going to play with a certain, not energy, but whether you want to call it athleticism or whatnot with when you play that much for that long, it's like your body can only do it for so long. Right. So I feel like even though I'm 32, I feel like because I don't necessarily have the miles and, even when I was in the bigs, I was an everyday guy. Um, so it's it just being realistic with, I just haven't essentially, if we're talking about a Fitbit, I haven't taken as many steps as a lot of other 32 year olds <laughs> to, to really just keep it, you know, simple. Um, so no, I mean, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, I mean, if you'd have told me at 32, I'd be under, you know, in that 185 pound range, I'd have told you you were crazy. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's my body feels like it did back in high school. Um, I feel like I move around, you know, as well as I have. So no, it's, um, I feel like because I'm still healthy, um, you know, knock on wood, God, you know, God willing um, to stay healthy, then, then yeah, that's, um, that was something that I made my, you know, had told myself uh, a while back. And because I kind of ran a little string there of just not being able to get on the field. Um, I feel like I'm kind of just almost seeing the benefits of it now, you know, on the back end and just kind of still feeling good and fresh. Awesome. So, and my last question, I'm going to put you on the spot here. So I mentioned at the beginning that the major league baseball playoffs start today, started today. Uh, who do you have in the world series and who's your champ? Man, I said, I said a while back and I grew up a white Sox fan. I said with that offense, um, I saw what Giolito did today. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there's no pitcher, there's no pitching staff that wants any part of that White Sox offense. They got the best offense top to bottom right now, um, or at least the most effective. Um, to 
Tampa Bay with those arms, um, the starters the, or the openers, um, the openers, whether you, you don't know if you're going to get a reliever or, or glass now or, or Snell. I mean, some of those guys, I think the arms of Tampa, the bats of the White Sox, I got to think those two, I, I, I would probably, I would take the Rays. If I had to say right now, I, I got the Rays getting in the World Series. Um, but out of the National League, though, <sighs> It's a little bit tougher. Um, I said, I because of how many guys on the Cubs underperformed, I said all year, like, don't let a guy like Javi Baez get hot, you know, at the right time. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, you look at the Marlins, uh, it's, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to play the Marlins. I, I, I bet they're going to win this. I bet, I bet they're going to get, I don't think they're going to go get knocked out in this this first round uh, so yeah it's it's tough i mean the national league i mean once you get it's, past it's once you get past maybe the dodgers and the dodgers you know i mean they 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 have something to prove you know? i mean they, yeah, they no. they've got something to prove but once you get past the dodgers it's really a a toss-up you know there yeah. case could be made for the reds you know if Trevor Bauer Trevor continues Bauer. to pitch well, and you know it's it's right. you never you don't know what you're gonna get because it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. So yeah, no, I mean I think because there's so many. Obviously, there's eight teams, so it's like there's there's so many teams that have the pitching to do it. Mm -hmm. But there's there's still just even some of those. There's only a few teams that really have the bats, or even just a bat. I mean, don't let it's you know Nick Castellanos with the Reds. You know, let Trevor Bauer, Sonny Gray, and Nick Castellanos get hot. And the Reds will go to the World Series too. So it's like because every team has there's so much talent, obviously in the big leagues in general. But I feel like on the playoff teams, the way this is formatted, you're you're in a position to where two or three guys can win you a series, a championship, and possibly a World Series now, um, just because of the way the format's set up. Uh, but no, if I had to guess, I'm gonna go raise Reds. I'm gonna go raise Reds. Reds. Okay. That would I'm be gonna interesting. Surprise, I'm gonna surprise some people. It'd be, be good for the people of Cincinnati. It's been a while since they've uh, since they've seen a uh, they've seen a World Series. Early '90s, no, I, I think. I, so, I think I think um, no, I think I think it'll be interesting too to see in Game Three and Game Four. One more, obviously, more Game Three. What guys are gonna go on like short rest? Um, because you gotta mm -hmm. think it's it was such a short season that now. These, these starters might be able to go on three days rest, four days rest. Um, so no, I'm interested to see the rotations and how they set up into the playoffs just because we only had 60 games. So every arm is a little bit fresher than obviously they would normally be. So fewer off days too, right? In the postseason this season, yeah, you don't no. you don't have those off uh, those off days between games, you know, yeah. one and two and games three and four. So uh, it's going to be interesting. It started today. Uh, Sox won. Um, Yankees are, are beating up uh, Shane Bieber right now, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. So, um, Tyler, again, I, I want to thank you for your time. Um, you know, I know it's getting kind of late on the east uh, on the east coast, and now you put your kids to bed not too long ago. So I appreciate you jumping on and spending some time with me here. Um, you know, I can say that 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 you know I had I I, I talked to. Uh, you know, the dog's ownership about this, uh, at the end of the season. And, and I had, I had an absolute fantastic time. Uh, you know, I was on the road with you guys. Again, I wasn't actually with you most of the time, but, but I had a great time on the road. I had a great time calling your games. Um, enjoyed watching you play. Uh, and, and I wish you the best of luck. So again, thanks for your time this. and, uh, we'll talk soon. All right. No, I appreciate it. We'll definitely, right. uh, definitely cross paths again. Appreciate right. it. Thanks Tyler. Absolutely. That was my interview with Chicago Dogs infielder Tyler Ladendorf. Audio versions of this and all of my previous interviews are found anywhere podcasts are located. If you want to reach out to me with questions or suggestions for future interviews, you can do so either through YouTube or Facebook at Around the World Sports, or you can find me on Twitter at Sports Guy. Aaron, thanks for joining me, and we'll talk to you next time.